Hello and welcome back. This is part three of building a 50s diner for a video game. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the other two videos. Uh, first off the bat, uh, what we want to do here is uh, bring in a character for reference of scale. I've done a uh, few things just to prep for this one in between uh, video number two and this one. So we want to bring in uh, our main man, Roger Rogers. All right, there's the man himself. There he is. Uh, we want to drop him in just to make sure the scale of everything makes sense in this environment. All right, those seats look like maybe pretty comfortable to sit at. Actually, to be totally honest, they're much too low. Okay, they're much too small, which means I'm going to have to scale up these uh, chairs along with the tables, and that's something that I can do at another time. Okay, so that's why we have our character here. Uh, we can fix that in just a little bit. Uh, first things I want to work on will be uh, starting to get our internal wall set up and light fixtures. Firstly, we'll add our light fixtures so we can finally get some light uh, going in this room. Uh, first thing I had a look at was this one here, which is a nice simple light. Um, kind of fits into any environment. It looks uh, a little bit more modern and clean. The difficulty with this is that it will cast a light downwards, um, but it won't necessarily um, have uh, an interesting light uh, to illuminate the ceiling. So I'm going to remove that. And if, if it were a point light, it would be quite uh, unpleasant to the eye. So what we want to do, uh, I've got my hierarchy off screen for you Unity users. Um, let's see here. I'll go ahead and start the timer. We will go ahead and add a light source to this, okay? And I'm going to make this a point light. We'll go ahead and turn our gizmos on for this so we can see what's going on, okay? Let's see. So my gizmo is there. I'm going to shrink my gizmo size down so it doesn't uh, disappear uh, into that spot there. And what I to do is make sure that for my objects, which would be uh, this and the ball here, I want to make sure that is not casting uh, any shadows. So that will be shadows off. All right, and our point light. Let's go ahead and have a look at our properties. Uh, we can. Oh, I haven't selected them, have I? Clicked on the uh, brain itself. Okay, I can just grab onto my gizmo. We selected our light. You can see that. This is the range of the light itself. These are quite easy to adjust and play with a bit. I want shadows on, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and put that on soft shadows just so we can have nice high quality stuff. You can see it's reflecting on the ceiling a bit. Okay. Uh, let's see, range. Now this is much too bright for my opinion. Uh, and I would like this light to have a nice soft uh, candescent bulb glow. Okay, so you sort of stumble on here uh, late at night and uh, you get this nice soft light that sort of um, glows. Okay, I'm going to set it in there. Go ahead and turn our gizmo off. And now, you can sort of see it sort of makes sense. Uh, maybe not necessarily. So what I'm actually going to do is increase the range on this guy because I, I have an idea of the sort of light that I want for this scene, I'm actually going to make that uh, a little bit warmer and darker, Something like that. Okay, that feels like a bit more like an incandescent globe to an extent. Now, for our globe material, we want to turn on our emission. So that looks like it's glowing. There's a lot of fiddling that you can do uh, with this to make it appear uh, just right. Uh, that should appear to be, you know, you don't want it too bright like that. Uh, that doesn't seem right in this situation. Uh, compared to the outfit light, it's going to be quite dull. Okay. Well, I feel like that bulb in this setting uh, looks a bit too bright. So you can muck around with this, uh, you know, until things just just look like they seem to make sense, okay? Right, so we've got that. We're going to um, check our overrides and you can um, see our changes here. So I'm just very quickly uh, trying to make this make sense here. We had 
uh, how are other objects going in uh, three meter increments? Uh, let's see where we are at nine. Okay. Let's see here and why we don't need to change, and then we'll go ahead and put that at. Okay, see? Not a big fan of that. Right. Okay, well, that seems to make sense. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to duplicate it. Let's go and put that at three. Duplicate that again. That at positive three. Oh, I've nudged it. And then, what was that, nine? Okay. Now we can see that it's starting to look a bit more interesting for the inside of our diner. And we have uh, an environment that's much easier to see. Now here we have our player camera. The player camera has all of the post-processing. Um, I spent weeks coming up with a post-processing -pro um, system so uh, I could give Silver Falls games a, a, a universally um, recognizable and distinct look when uh, you're playing the games themselves. So I'm going for quite a, a punchy photographic look uh, with high contrast, high highs and low lows. Um, Let's go ahead and drop that in there, and that going okay. Right. Now I'm sort of relying on uh, our volumetric fog and lighting system for volumetric fog, but it's not that powerful um, in this particular indoors environment. Okay, and we can sort of see uh, what's going on there, and that's with chromatic aberrations um, and post-processing. Okay. Let's go ahead and just uh, grab Dodger, bring him into the scene so that way uh, he's not going to hit his head on the lights. Uh, I might raise those lights up a little bit. I did want them hanging, but I think I'm going to uh, raise them up maybe just a bit because if you get a tall fella in here, um, maybe he might uh, run the risk of hitting his head. There, there isn't a super tall hanging around town anyway, no Bigfoot's lumbering around or anything like that. Okay. Let's put them there for now. So this wall, we had, um, so this is two separate pieces, as you can see. And I've set them at, at a, um, sort of what seems to make sense to me in terms of distance. I'm going to grab this guy. Mm -hmm here just to see where it lines up. That seems to want to go there. See that's kind of hard. Uh, there's no reason to do that really. It's just sort of, you know, I'm ODC a little bit when it comes to numbers popping up like that. All right. We have a nice seamless attachment of our walls. Let's go ahead. We're going to duplicate these. Shift them over. Actually, no, what am I doing? We're just going to invert these. The opposite of 90 is 270. Now we have walls on the other side. So we've got room for our two turlets here. I'm going to have two walls um, set up there. If I can just, very briefly, just to pencil that in here. All right. Put that in 180. Oh, this is, goodness gracious, I've done the wrong thing here. Fantastic. All right, now we want to try and put these uh, in distances that make sense. Of course, let's see how it lines up with the wall. Let's see. In terms of, we're looking at X right now, okay? Now, if we go to 10, it seems to intersect there. I'm going to see what this looks like for Z. Uh, it's not super important. I suppose I'll try and make that neat here. Let's go ahead and look back at our reference pixel art again. You can see there is a bit of a wall here, so there's room for, you know, maybe you can put a, a, a jukebox or a desk there with some decorations or something neat. We'll figure it out as we go, but it certainly won't have the door connected just there. This pixel art was so because the characters needed units to walk through or units of space to walk through. So let us check how this looks. If we duplicate this fella, drop him here, you can see we have a bit of uh, empty space here if I leave it at seven. So I think what I want to do, it might be best, but that there is what I'm thinking, okay? 
Let's just see how this works out. We're going to put this at 5.5, and we're going to see if we can fill in this space with another wall, right? We have wall in. We have them in increments of one meter. Let's go ahead and flip that around. Oh, that almost lined up really nicely just by accident. What I'm actually going to do is copy this component just to save me mucking around with my numbers. I'm going to paste it in there so it lines up just like that. And look, we got pretty close 007. That is annoying, which means I should probably slide these units in along uh, probably half a meter. That looks like half a meter. So what we are going to do is bring that guy right in there to 8.5. This guy is going to an even and slick, goodness gracious, I've gone the wrong direction. Okay, I think all of these units will share the same x value. Let's go ahead and grab these four units. Let's go ahead and put them at negative 4.5. And that seems to line us up just right. We have space for the restrooms now. And I will go ahead and get the frames for the doors. I'll, I'll, I'll slot them in later just so we know uh, where they are. Now, I, I might slide these in a bit uh, as I grab these walls. Uh, and I might use, again, another unit like this, another one meter to fill in, fill in the space. But first, what I'll do here is just so I know where my spacing is, I'm going to duplicate those. I've done Control D. I'll set the rotation to zero. Now I can see what it looks like on the other side. Bless my heart, it looks like I've forgotten one unit there. Righto, we will reduce that value. One meter, fantastic. There we go, here's the view looking out the toilet. We've got some frames that'll fill in uh, that door frame there. We can slop in our doors. And this is where we can have our toilets. I've got a library of bathroom stalls, toilets, and sinks to fill in that space there. Fantastic. We are making good progress. So what we'll do now is a sort of earmark space for the kitchen. Now, what I'm thinking is the kitchen will probably take up... See, I, I, I don't know what will happen if we send this out. Is that too much. Now it is too crowded if the bar extends this far out. Okay, That feels a bit too much because I would like to have tables here as well. So what we're going to do is take one of these pieces. This is the uh, one meter unit. So I'm going to extend these out one more meter and if needed I might even extend it a second meter. So we're looking at our uh, z-axis here. Uh, let's go ahead and put that at seven, right? And what I will do is I will copy this component, the transform. I'll select this wall. I will control D to duplicate. Let's go ahead and paste that in there. And you can see we've got that set up just there. So what now I will do is copy that component just to make it easier for me to line up the rotations. There we go. Piece of cake. Now, we have seven. We'll duplicate that. We will change the rotation to 270. Go ahead and slide that back in there. Set that at 8. And we have what I think looks okay. We are going all right on time. But I feel like I'm looking at that, right? You're going to have the bar here. You're going to have another set of tables. Okay, so what we will do is drop in our bar. So I've sort of prepared one of these. Well, I've, I've sort of chopped it up into pieces that uh, need fitting. But I will see where we go. So I'm looking at my uh, diner here. Where is... Hmm, just uh, give me a moment to look at my uh, components. All right, I'm looking at my models. Okay, and I have my counter. Let's see. I might just have to run a search for that here. Counter. Okay. Uh, full and counter crop. I have found it. So I've popped this in the oven earlier, and uh, now it's about time to take it on out. So I 
I have my counter full. Is this guy here? Now, the thing is, I want that to be facing the other direction. In my modeling program, I, I might actually need to invert that. Because again, if you um, have a mesh collider uh, with a negative value, uh, you're going to have a model that needs to be uh, read and write only, which uses more memory. Okay, for now. I don't actually, I'm not a giant fan of that material. I believe I'd created a new material. Here we go, I'd something a bit more pink, right? That sort of fits the color scheme of this diner. So just for now, let's go ahead and set that there. It does feel a bit weird to have a floating bit just there, doesn't it? Anyway, this is just for now. We'll see how things fit out. Um, but I, I don't want to extend it out further. Let's go ahead and bring that back in a little bit. Oh, my dear. Seem to be leaving our cabinets behind. Okay. Let's make sure we select the whole object this time instead of one of the components. Right. That's going to need room for the kitchen back there, which is going to be tight. So possible that I might need to extend this up. We'll see how we go. Now we get to our next counter, which is one that I have cropped in the editing program. Let's go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. Now it looks like I don't have room for my flap. No room for my flap. This is a little bit not what I want. So we're going ahead and duplicate these uh, and extend it out another meter. And that should give us space for our uh, door flap. So first we'll grab our corner bits, put that out at six, which means, oh, hmm, I've duplicated it. Silly me. Put him at six. We're going to duplicate this guy, uh, put him at six, and we'll duplicate this guy, put him at seven. Fantastic, and we are going well. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit of fudging. Uh, who knows how we'll go with that? Let's go ahead and find our counter door. We have a door somewhere that I'll slot in, uh, and you can see I'm going to have to fudge a little bit with this because now there isn't enough, there isn't exactly enough room even with that much space. So I'm just going to fudge that a little. And I'm going to change the scale of this object because uh, I'm going to have to do what is necessary. That is large, and this is, again, this unit, uh, this object is not 100% um, accurate in terms of um, units. So uh, it looks like I may need to uh, drop these uh, objects into the modeling program itself, and I'm going to have to merge those um, vertices together if they don't line up well. But they seem kind of happy there, which means I'm only going to have to do a little bit of fudging to get that working properly. Anyway, uh, you can see that we've made a little bit of progress now. We're going to head to our reflection probe now, and we will just quickly do a quick update. We'll make sure these are reflection probes static, and we'll have to wrap things up here today. So let's find our reflection probe. We'll go like this. I like to type in the find button. We have the probe. We've selected the probe. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and bake this again. Okay, not much of a change. So well, we can look at our probe here and you can see. Um, ah, right. These are not set to static. There we go. Uh, right, back to our probe. Let's go ahead and bake it again just to see the change in our map. And you can see it is reflected in there. Let's go ahead and grab our uh, player camera one more time before we log out here. Let's have a quick look on our screen that's fully post-processed. You can see it's coming together. Once we get our ceiling on, you'll have shadows cast properly on the back wall. Okay, we are going to start populating uh, more details in. We're going to fill out some furniture uh, and get some details in behind the bar. We'll get our bar stools and other interesting things behind the bar, our cash register, our coffee maker. Mm, you know what? I'm telling you I could go for a coffee.
So if you just give me a moment to uh, set things up for the next video, uh, we will get started on that. So this is it for today. Thanks very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that. Guys, please subscribe to the like button and appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoy the Silver Falls games. Please check in next time for number four. See ya.